An easy way to retrieve dependencies in a class is by using the service locator pattern. But isn't that considered an anti-pattern in clean code? Let's find out. Here is a simple tool that parses build log files and creates a report listing each compiler warning and the files causing those warnings. Imagine we want to enhance the report by providing clickable links to the source code. Following the single responsibility principle, we will place the functionality to build a link from the local file path in a separate class. Since there will be different implementations, such as Azure DevOps and GitHub, we will create an interface. Now the question is, how does the HTML report class retrieve the actual implementation? The simplest approach seems to be a static factory that provides the proper implementation based on some configuration. This makes it easy to call the factory directly in the HTML report class. But how can we test this class independently from the specific link builder? To resolve this issue, we could apply the service locator pattern. A service locator acts as a registry for instances of classes. It is usually generic, allowing us to ask with an interface or some other key, like a name, to retrieve the implementation. If no implementation is found, a service locator may throw an exception or simply return null, leaving it up to the caller to handle this case. In our HTML report, we then use the service locator to retrieve any dependency needed, for example an implementation of iLink Builder. In the main function of this program, we create the service locator, register the respective implementation of iLink Builder and pass the service locator to the HTML report. In the HTML report tests, we can then use the service locator to provide a fake link builder to the HTML report class, which allows us testing it without any dependency to a real link builder. With the service locator in place, we can now introduce further dependencies easily. Once registered in the main function, we can access those dependencies everywhere without needing to adapt unrelated classes to pass dependencies around. So that makes writing new code very convenient, doesn't it? But this convenience has one major drawback. The concrete dependencies of a class are not visible from its AP surface. The service locator pattern is hiding these dependencies. Now imagine we need to analyze the possible impact of a change in some class. How would we perform such an analysis if all possible users of that class do not express their dependencies via AP surface or AP documentation? Or let's look at the tests of the HTML report. How do we actually know which fakes we have to register? Or imagine we want to reuse such a class in a different context. How do we know which dependencies need to be registered at the service locator so that this class behaves as expected? And remember, it is not only about the initial author of a class who can probably answer all those questions easily because she knows all the implementation details. It is also about any other team member or any developer joining the team later. How are they answering those questions? They probably have no other option than either analyzing the implementation of the respective class or following trial and error until it works. This might not be a big deal in this particular example, but imagine how such a design would scale with hundreds of classes and tens of thousands of lines of code. And because of all those aspects, from my perspective, the service locator pattern is clearly an anti-pattern. But luckily there is a simple solution. Dependency injection. This means Every required dependency is passed to a class explicitly. As a rule of thumb, mandatory dependencies the class cannot work without should be passed via the constructor, while optional dependencies can be passed via the constructor or a property. Of course, introducing new dependencies now require a bit more work, but from my perspective the benefits clearly outweigh the drawbacks. And there's one more benefit. It is now pretty easy to detect classes which have a lot of dependencies and so may indicate a violation of the single responsibility principle. Does using dependency injection mean we need a dependency injection container or framework? Clearly no. I even recommend manually injecting dependencies until your project clearly benefits from such a framework. And if you do consider using a dependency injection framework, I strongly recommend to choose one that doesn't require you to reference it across your code base, like adding specific attributes to your classes. Do you already use these two simple design principles to significantly reduce bugs in your projects? No? Then watch these videos next.